Hello, welcome to one more of our videos. Today I'm going to show you the standard of the Jan Schnauzer edited by the Schnauzer Club of America. And there's many reasons why I want to make this video. Number one, I want to thank my friend Ginny Mace to give me this amazing book. I have learned a lot from them. Um, well, thank you Ginny. I really appreciate that. Uh, number two, the beautiful art that is included here. It's amazing. This lady called Jen Flora made a really good job and you can understand a lot of concepts of the Janice Schnauzer. And number three, <clears throat> I want to make sure our handling students keep in mind how important it is to know your breathing standard. Every time that you step on the ring, you need to be thinking about that because it's exactly what the judge is looking for, okay? Um, if you have your standard or your own breed and you want to share it with us, let me know and we can make a slideshow, make a video or something, but it's very important we share and we can learn from each other. Please don't stay in your own breed. You can learn a lot of things looking at the other breeds, okay? Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel in YouTube, the dog community is right here, and Dogs Connection and follow us on Facebook, Dog Community, Dogs Connection. Thank you very much and let's check the standard. This is the beautiful illustrated standard that I was talking about a minute ago. Many people think the most important part of the standard is the description, I mean the first paragraph of the standard. And we can see in this standard it's called for athletic dog, very robust dog, like a working dog, solid dog, never massive but really square with a beautiful neck top length at the scent medium tail set and beautiful harsh coat beers and crop ears in the case of the american type the head need to have a rectangular appearance need to look like a brick in this way it's very important the cheeks come clean here and this one stay flat mm -hmm. this is a good example with the ear scrub and in this section you're going to talk a little bit about some of the faults like at this dog you can see the cheeks coming out it's no clean line here and this one coming way to a dome and this is what we want to see between the ears, too light. This head is definitely too light. Don't resemble a working dog. And this head is too massive. In this picture, I want to pay a lot of attention to these two lines, these brown lines is called the planes. And it's very important this plane stay parallel. They need to point it. They need to be traveling in the same direction. Difference with this picture that we can see here. This line come here. And this one is not on the same way as we would like. Mm -hmm. Also very important, the distance here and here need to be the same to make the proportion of the health of the head nice and equal mm -hmm. here we can see the distance between these two points is shorter than the distance between these two points and this you can see this head is no palace it's not as pretty as this one the bite as a working dog, need to have 42 pieces in a scissor bite, like this picture. However, the standards say level bite is not desirable, but doesn't say it's a DQ. We're going to talk a little more when we get to the DQ section about bite. The ears need to be set high, as you can see in this crop case. And when they're not cropped, need to have a B shape. 
Mm -hmm. You can see this little corner here. I need to be set on the same way. Here's some problems. These ears are set too high. This one too low. This one are too howny here. You can see the difference between the nice one and this one. Too long. This one are cropped and say too low. And these one are too long. So. The eyes need to be oval and dark brown. Basically as dark as possible. This one is an example on two light eyes. It's called eagle eyes. This one are too round. We need an oval. We want it oval. This one are bulging eyes. The slender eyes. About the neck. It's supposed to be an arch. Very similar than the Doberman. Doesn't show very well in this picture. Maybe in the next one I can show you a little more. But this is an example of fouls. This neck is too coarse and thick. And this one is just not enough. Here, in this picture you can see a little better what it's called arch and blended together with the body. Mm -hmm. About the body, <clears throat> need to have substance look like a working dog. In this drawing, it's talking about the proportions that the head needs to have with the body to create harmony. In this page, we see a beautiful skeleton of Jan Schnauzer. Look at that. Beautiful artwork. Some faults on the body. The first one that you we look here is probably because these ribs are too flat. I'm going to give a quick appearance. These one are too round and will be too massive in appearance. And we don't need that. And this is one of the most common faults that we can see on bodies. Look at this top line. Very, very incorrect. Look at the proportion of this dog. This dog is too short on body and the tail set is coming too low mm -hmm. too stress front and too in stress rear talking about angulation here talking about angulation here we can compare with this one and it's the extreme this dog is too heavy and is too soft on the top line. See this little dip here? Even when this dog that is not correct, you can look at the difference. A stretch front and over angulated. See? This is just too much. Too long. This dog is not square at all. Shoulders. As we have been talking, the front angulation is really important. And here is an illustration with so st two stretch front. This one is with a short shoulder. And again, one of the classic faults in this structure on any breed. Remember, when we say structure and we say movement, is basically the same thing. Chest and back. The standards say the chest need to come down at least to the elbows, right here on this level. And 
and need to be in an oval shape. We don't want to see a round thing like a bulldog or like a massive dog. This one going to help to make the look, make the dog look athletic. Hmm? The top line need to be descended like this. And the tail set a lot of problems on the bridge in this department. This is the perfect tail set on a dog. We see too many dogs with a high tail set. They just crop it like this, and these dogs are winning a low. And this is an example of too low tail set. The hindquarters really really important but i want you to pay a lot of attention to this picture because the angulation on the front need to match to the angulation on the wear to be able that this dog can move properly and have the right extension we're going to talk a little more in the next pages about it again Genetic problems on the movement. Cow hocks, open hocks. The feet need to be a cut feet. Short, here, as a working dog, and not too open like this one, or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. The hawks, super hawks, and weak narrow upper hives. Movement, very, very important. I was talking about the angulations on the front. This one going to let the dog extend it like this and stay too. If this too short, it come shorter like this and the same in the way if you see this distance here is the same distance here this is a beautiful balanced dog and we're going to talk about more about the problems in the same page it's very important in a working dog <coughs> they can move for example, why of the problems? And I think the one that worry me the most is this one. This is a dog that is reaching. It's very important. We can see dogs in the magazines, many boxers, many sporting dogs, many other breeds. I'm going to come back a little to the other page. And you see these two hawks. I mean, these two feet are not touching together. They're not overlapping as they doing in this picture. Mm -hmm. And this is more problem that you can see. Lack on reach and drive. This dog is poor in angulation. And this is why it doesn't want to have all the extension that we are looking for. Hagnik, when the dog move, you need to see this front leg in a stretch line. If you see this, it's not correct at all. And of course, the roller problem that any breed can say. I will say in this breed, in my experience, the out elbow is the main problem because we know there is a line in, in this breed that is very famous and we can see a lot of problems with that. The coat. <clears throat> Look at this picture, how nice it is. Um, the coat need to be harsh. I found really interesting that the standard didn't talk too much about the furnitures, mm -hmm. but the beers and the airbrows need to be longer. And to have this texture, this dog need to be worked properly and with a lot of technique and with a lot of work. <coughs> and here is one of the problems: soft woolly coat kinky coat
single coat and undercoat. And this dog is doing with a clipper. The texture is killing when you do a dog with a clipper. Color and heights, very simple. In the giant schnauzer, black, solid black, and salt and pepper. As we know, uh, different than the relative, the miniature schnauzer. Uh, even in the FCI, we have the black and silver, and even the white. But here, no black and silver, no white, okay? The height is really interesting that they mark 20 and a half inches to 27 and a half inches for the males and 23 and a half inches to 25 in the, fem in the females. And difference with the FCI that I have the standard right here and it's in centimeters, but it's basically only one measure for boy size. Actually, I make this little table to compare this is the males, this is the females, everything in inches. The AKC go 23.5 to 27. Mm -hmm. And the FCI is basically the same. DQ, AKC, overshot and undershot, marking other than specifies. FCI. Sorry that it's in Spanish, but it's mark uh, major faults section and then DQ, aggressive dogs, shy dogs, and lack of type C, and also the bite with this undershot and undershot, and also it's marking by the high, four centimeters over the limit or under. So it's a little different. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it.